Typically, when people talk consensus algorithms, they think proof of work and they think proof of stake. But proof of reception actually gets rid of the miners and gets rid of staking. And that's really, really interesting to me. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Changing the world, one blockchain at a time, with George Levy. Brought to you by Blockchain Institute of Technology. Hey, Blockchain Visionaries, it's George Levy. Welcome to Changing the World, One Blockchain at a Time, where we feature the leading minds and personalities in the world of blockchain, Bitcoin, and cryptocurrencies. Today, our guest is Esco, a prophet of the Trinity, which is the community behind the proof of reception consensus algorithm. Esco is an expert in cross-border transactions in finance, technology, infrastructure, media, and entertainment. He's been in the blockchain protocol and distributed ledger technology since 2016, and this promises to be a very valuable episode. Esco, I'm very excited that you're in the show. Thank you for having me, George. I The key reason I want to get into is that everything that I've learned about proof of reception completely upends and completely, how can I say it? It disrupts the whole concept of what we now know as the best known consensus algorithms. So typically when people talk consensus algorithms, they think proof of work and they think proof of stake, but proof of reception actually gets rid of the miners and gets rid of staking. And that's really, really interesting to me. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yes, definitely. So we're kind of um, finding ourselves in a paradigm shift from centralized data to decentralized data. And uh, as many of you may know, that's called Web3. So previous to Web3, we um, operated online via a paradigm where all our data was centralized, closed, and privatized by a number of uh, institutions, companies, and other intermediaries. Uh, and uh, with the advent of Bitcoin uh, and some of the earlier protocols, as you know, they employed a proof-of-work consensus mechanism where miners... Um, which were computers, were responsible for validating transactions across the network. Uh, thereafter, experiencing a lot of inefficiencies with proof of work, such as high gas fees, time delay, uh, and eventually, you know, a majority of the miners being consolidated among the various institutional owners. So once again, no longer being decentralized, uh, we pivoted into what's called proof of stake, where we had people that have a predominant amount of tokens among the outstanding tokens in a particular network to be chosen as validators. And the more tokens you had, the more likely you are to be chosen as a validator. And that has lasted since, uh, I would say, 2018 or so. And you know now we're kind of hitting a wall because we see some of the leading proof of stake protocols like Terra and Luna and others uh, being compromised as uh, stakers as well get larger positions and are able to profit themselves at the expense of the rest of the network. So proof of reception, as you highlighted, George, uh, removes uh, miners and stakers and third parties altogether. It's kind of based on the premise that we all have access to this decentralized data via the immutable ledger of blockchain and other distributed ledger technologies. What POR enables you to do is access this data via these these uh, decentralized ledgers and essentially validate your own transactions. And there's a lot of um, proprietary software uh, that's being developed so that we can uh, empower every human being. That's uh, 7.9 billion humans with this new technology where we no longer need third parties to validate our transactions and we take control of our own values like never before. One of the things that I find fascinating about what you said is the fact that you get rid, and I, I use the term get rid in the best of terms, but the need for a miner and mining rigs, mining equipment, and stakers, which have to have a stake. So in some ways, to me, that kind of kind of centralizes the process because you need to be able to afford mining equipment or you need to have at least a stake. So for in order to be able to validate, you're sort of relying on people that either have the equipment or people that have the stakes. And uh, proof of reception doesn't do that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this whole uh, movement towards decentralization um, has a optimistic promise that we're going to get rid of the quote-unquote middleman and the central mm -hmm. authority. However, um, with that, 
lofty goal. Um, the previous consensus mechanisms have only created another middleman, uh, as you highlighted, uh, in the form of miners and stakers. Uh, with POR, uh, we realize that all of our personal values are already stored online in some real world or some digital database. So what we enable is at the wallet level, you become your own validator node and you utilize our various um, components uh, such as a portfolio, ports, portraits, portions, and portals uh, to be able to essentially customize your own transactions and uh, design your own properties in terms of who and what uh, you want to transact with. And I notice a trend here. You got, because proof of reception, I guess, is P-O-R. And then you have ports, you have portraits. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Like, how does this all play into P-O-R? Sure. So I can kind of provide a highlight uh, in terms of different components that make proof of reception consensus possible. So the first step for us to take any real life value, whether it's fiat, you know, whether it's our own data profile, uh, whether it's music, you know, everything is represented by metadata, as you know, uh, is the portal. And portal, P-O-R-T-A-L, stands for Proof of Reception Terminal Access Link. So essentially, mm. portal is like an oracle where you can take any value that's living in you know, any database online. For example, uh, via banking APIs, uh, we can also uh, port in you know, various um, bank accounts uh, via Plaid and, you know, other uh, ledgers that exist um, with banking systems. Uh, and then thereafter, you port in that value. Uh, there's a no next step called a port, which is the proof of reception terminal. So with mm -hmm. that real world value, you're able to uh, store that within your proof of reception terminal, which is essentially a wallet that has uh, three major functions of self-validation, uh, self-transfer, and self-recording on the ledger. And once you have that value within your port, then you're able to customize your own kind of preferences or rules and conditions, what the industry calls a smart contract, around that value. And that's what's called a portraits, P-O-R-T-R-A-I-T-S. And the traits are the data fields or the conditions. Mm. Uh, for poor to execute upon that value. And then once that real world value has a portrait, um, that becomes what's called a portion, P-O-R-T-I-O-N, on the portfolio. And the portfolio is this decentralized data ledger where all the ports are broadcasting all their respective values with their portraits uh, so that they can find other ports and do a true decentralized peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, POR. That's actually very, very interesting how everything ties in together with the proof of reception or POR approach. Is, is it merely a concept or is it actually being currently used? Are there current applications of proof of reception? Where can we expect to see more? Yes. Um, although the majority of our use cases are in stealth mode and haven't been released to the public, uh, we initially um, donated uh, our consensus algorithm for various charitable causes. Um, as you may know, George, um, sometimes we donate money to a specific cause and we never know where it ends up. And according to the United Nations, close to right. 50% of, yeah, close to 50% 50 of charitable donations uh, never really reach their intended recipient. So uh, due to this amount of inefficiency, it's a real shame. Yeah, due to, due to this amount of inefficiency um, that we face, unfortunately, in this charitable world, uh, POR's first use case enabled people in need. Uh, whether it be single mothers in New York City, whether it be uh, Ukrainian refugees that are surrounded by Russian troops, uh, to be able to utilize POR to self-validate themselves as qualified recipients of help. And then uh, with those uh, non-fungible values of their self-credentials, we were able to use POR so that donors could uh, find them, uh, locate them, and uh, send much-needed resources directly to their smartphone uh, using existing uh, payment rails and, and banking infrastructure. So that's kind of at a high level on the charitable side. You can check out proofofreception.org uh, to see that use case live in action. Um, moreover, uh, we're also customizing POR for other industries where we've seen a grave uh, disparity among the different users, uh, namely entertainment. So um, coming from a background in music as well, 
uh, I've kind of seen the gross uh, negligence as it relates to creators um, getting compensated for their creations. And mm -hmm. creators extends beyond, you know, music and film. And, you know, you, George, yourself, you're, you're a creator, you know, creating this amazing um, platform uh, with your content. But we also have, you know, our own photos and videos, our family moments. We're constantly creating. However, I know you haven't looked at the fine print, you know, most of you on the user agreements for these uh, social media platforms. None of the content that we create and that we upload uh, is ultimately owned by ourselves and it's owned by the platform so that they can la leverage our personal assets to yeah. sell advertising and, and uh, be worth billions of dollars. So in, in, with regards to that... Um, uh, to, to kind of summarize everything, uh, we, we've helped creators to connect directly with their fan bases uh, using distributed ledger technology with POR consensus. And how POR makes it more convenient for fans is, uh, I, I know you and your students, uh, George, you know, you already know about MetaMasks and you know about mm -hmm. gas fees and have an exchange account to convert fiat into crypto and, uh, you know, Put inputting your private keys to unlock your MetaMask, but all these complex uh, procedures are not something that's enjoyable uh, or even practical for entertainment fans. So music fans, film fans, art fans are not crypto natives. So with POR, uh, if you're an artist, you can literally port in your content. And on the other end, the fan can port in their fiat and you do a self-validation and you don't deal with a lot of the uh, inefficiencies of converting into crypto and having to have this uh, technological background. So that's another use case in entertainment. And then we're also working with uh, the leading alternative trading systems, uh, which already have full support from FINRA and SEC to allow mm. structured financial products uh, to become portions and for um, issuers to trade those financial products uh, with investors uh, porting in their money as portions as well. So, um, you know, as the day goes by, uh, we're growing into more use cases, uh, other industries that are customizing POR uh, to provide um, true Web3 consensus uh, include metaverse, gaming, supply chain, um, even uh, we're, we're, we're preparing a, a political use case to even help digital voting uh, provide a fair elections in various countries as well. So. Uh, George, uh, we hope to uh, continue to update you on more use cases, but Please. living and breathing and applicable and transforming a lot of different industries as we speak. What's fascinating about it, thank you very much, and absolutely, would love to learn more about it, would love to be able to amplify it. Our goal is to change the world for positive. And uh, one of the things that's fascinating is that uh, ESCO is actually, every situation can offer hope. So the, I guess the DNA of this whole initiative is built upon this vision of there could be a better world. And what I love about the POR approach was one of the things that I like the most is I deal so many times with a lot of people who are saying Bitcoin is bad for the planet, Bitcoin, the Bitcoin mining and all this like useless uh, need for all these electricities. And, and I'm saying, okay, so your approach is completely different. So not only are you focusing on all these positive use cases, but also just the technology itself just is not so resource intensive. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's actually carbon negative and it's getting rid of a lot of waste. So, you know, even down to the, you know, the unbanked villager, for example, you know, people that don't have mm -hmm. fiat or any type of monetary instrument, um, they can now, you know, be able to meet their, uh, you know, basic needs via POR. Now, how do we do that? Um, our model is to empower everyone with their own port or proof of reception terminal, uh, even if our foundation needs to uh, work with other corporations to donate uh, the device, uh, the internet, and the electricity to power it. But uh, imagine you're this poor villager, you're very hungry, you have no money. And then on the other end, imagine you're a local restaurant owner and you don't have enough money uh, for that month to pay for dishwashers and servers. Now you can port in uh, your offer for food, which, you know, as you know, a lot of restaurants throw away tons of food all the time. You can utilize that food that would have gone to waste uh, to feed this uh, hungry neighbor and have the neighbor trade uh, mm. that utility of food for washing the dishes at your restaurant. So it's really kind of going back to kind of the barter system of old, but leveraging Web3 data sets and POR consensus to 
uh, essentially pour a better life for everyone who lives on this planet. Excellent. Thank you very much, Esco. It's been a fascinating uh, time being able to speak with you. Now, the best way that people from the audience who would want to learn more about Proof of Reception and uh, would it be proofofreception.org? Are there any other ways? Yeah, there's proofofreception.org. Uh, and uh, if you scroll down, there's a contact us section and uh, there's also an email address, por at proofofreception.org, uh, where we can uh, share more information with you and uh, let you uh, be involved in our growing community. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so very much, Esco, for being in the Changing the World One Blockchain at a Time episode podcast and uh, wishing proof of reception and all your work the absolute best. Thank you, George. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something in the process. I bring you brand new videos every single week, so make sure to subscribe to this channel. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I would love to hear from you. Until next time, I'm George Levy. We're changing the world one blockchain at a time. See you next time.